Okay, so today I'll show you how to make a vector logo from a roster image. I know a lot of times photographers make logos in Photoshop, but then what happens is they're not transparent, they're not printable on other types of media. Um, again, printers can't use JPEGs. What they require are an EPS or an AI file. A PDF is also okay so long as it comes out of Adobe Illustrator. So here I'm going to show you how to go in reverse from Photoshop to Illustrator. The first step you're going to do is flatten if it's not already done. Here it is. I'm going to select the blacks. And this only works with the two color logo, remember. Um, you can add color in Illustrator, but what you want to start with is your black and white. Select your blacks, go to similar, to get everything that's originally black. You go over here to your paths tab and go make a working path. Tolerance of 1.0 pixels. Hit OK. You go to file and export paths to Illustrator. I'm going to save this one as logo 2, save, and go to over to Illustrator, file, open, logo 2.ai. Now this is what it's going to look like when you open it. There's, it looks like there's nothing on the page except for these crop marks. There actually is. If you go to control Y, so I'm going to show you outlines of the vector image you just created. Remember that vectors are mathematical algorithms, it's not rasterization or pixels. You hit control Y, and there it looks pretty much like what it did in Photoshop. You use Photoshop to figure out what areas have to be filled in what color. So I'm going to pick this outer loop here. You always want to work the outside and inside whenever you're doing this, or it's going to get pretty complicated. I'll show you why in a minute. Pick your black here. I know that this inside circle is supposed to be white. I'm going to pick my white from here. Black again. Real quickly, this is your this is your fill. This outside one is your stroke. Just so long as that stroke has that slash through it, it means there's no stroke being added. You want to just work with fills right now. Outside the flower should be white. Inside should be black star part should be white, inside circle is black, and a little tiny circle on the absolute inside is white again. And that looks pretty similar to what we have here. Now I just need to put in the text, go back to my outline view, select all of this with your selection tool, black again. Now what you're going to notice is these inside counters are actually filled in white. Pick just those, you can shift click on them, make them white. And then you're going to want to realize that this is a separate object. I'm going to control Z back so it looks how it should. But that means that this can be scaled, it can, it can really screw up your logo if you don't actually make this a single path. The way to do that is select the counter and the outside of the letter and go to your window pathfinder palette. Then you're going to pick subtract from shape area and then expand. What that does, go back to my outline view, I can no longer click on the inside of that circle. I'm going to do that again here and expand again. Now you want to always work from the outside and inside like I said before, so you pick this white circle would exclude this black circle. Expand. This one, that should exclude from the outside here, but because this is already a transparent shape, and I can show you what that should look like. I'm just going to make a random color here. Send to back. You can see that this white is now transparent. But if I slide it under more, this is actually a white flower. So I'm going to exclude this black from this white. Go over to my Pathfinder palette again. Window, where'd it go? Pathfinder. Expand. Take this from the outside flower. Sorry about that. Take this from the black inside flower, rather. Expand. Now let's, and this is an easy way to see if we missed anything. We apparently missed this white flower from the black. Here, expand. And now you have an almost transparent logo.
fully transparent vector logo. So you're going to save that as, save it as logo to final.ai, and that would be the file that you're going to want to use and send to your printer. So I hope that helps, and if you have any questions, as always, you can ask me, and hopefully I can answer them for you.